Okay, uh, welcome back to Pokemon Violet. For the YouTube side, we just watched the Nintendo Direct today on February 8th. I will get that uploaded probably tonight, and it will go live immediately. I, but the problem is, I can't. I, like, even with fiber internet, I can't upload while streaming because it will just cause my stream. It will just cause my stream to crash. <laughs> Uh, looks like some good stuff. Uh, we saw a lot of, we saw a lot of games with cult followings, um, Biting Kratos, um, Professor Layton, we saw a couple of new game, or new IPs announced. Uh... Oh, oh, overall, it's like a really good year for Nintendo. Metroid Prime... Uh, one was remake was a uh, remake was announced. So that's another really interesting thing, especially because they only announced a remake of one. They didn't announce a remake of two or three. And you're probably thinking, well, what's well, weird? Why would they do one but not the uh, but not two and three? Um, and the reason for that is they're. Very likely, they're testing the waters with marketing. The marketing is probably testing the waters. And trying to figure out if there's enough demand to bother with doing that. I guarantee the next thing we know... Um, Sneasel, the Sharp Claw Pokemon, Dark and Ice type. This is a smart and sneaky Pokemon. A pair may work together to steal eggs by having one lure the parents away. Oh, I didn't realize Cecil had fur on it. I always thought its body was basically made of ice. Um, as I was saying... Uh, I guarantee it's it's the marketing team kind of testing the waters to see if there is demand for to justify um, to justify re remaking the other two, and they'll probably do um, they'll probably remake the other two at a later time. They might even. Make a bait, make a thing of like, oh, all three Metroid Prime games are now on the Switch. Um, instead of just, which is weird still, because they could have just remade the, the the trilogy from the Wii U game from the Wii U. Um, as they, um, uh, in in. Instead of doing, uh, just the one. Ooh, Intimidate. Uh, but yeah, they probably could have just remade the trilogy from the Wii U instead of just the one. But... They chose not to do that, so I don't know. It, 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 it puts it puts us it puts us in a weird situation. Not ah, jeez, Victorian. That's got water absorbed, so I'm not gonna be able to flip turn. Might also have an ice type move, so let's just swap in um, kill the watch roll. It puts us consumers in an interesting position because now we have to make the choice of do we want to wait for the next um because it, 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 it makes it 
see, it makes it like, do we, let's just have to decide, do we want to wait until the next, or until the other ones come out, or do we want to buy the first one to show that there's interest in the other two? I really wish this thing was a water and fighting type. Storm wave crash, hold up. Ooh. It's useful for pivoting. Jet punch is good priority. Acrobatics is really good coverage. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I could teach- no, because that's only- I was gonna say, I guess I could teach- maybe teach Ice Punch over Acrobatics. That would allow Trixie to hold something. I guess Wave Crash doesn't matter as much, as long as we don't get- hit by a binding move, and I think even if we hit by a, get hit by a binding move, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I said wave crash, uh, flip turn. I feel like water, wave crash, since this, this is literally water type flare blitz and we have drain punch, we saw how amazing that combination was on, um, Rillaboom with wood hammer and drain punch, so we'll get rid of flip turn for wave crash. Sneasel. <laughs> Hi, Snowrun. Boy, so it can't become a frost lass. Snow run, the snow hat, hat Pokemon, ice type. It is said that a home visited by a snow run will prosper. It can withstand cold of negative 350 degrees, or 150 degrees rather, Fahrenheit. Honestly, 350 seems a little more realistic for po for how Pokemon are. Uh... Nope. Don't mind the reward. Oh, a bomb snow. Hi, meet the meet a ghost and fire type. So warning, but it failed because it's already snowing. We're just kind of expanding our Pokédex now. We're catching a bunch of Pokémon that we've seen around but haven't caught. I'm just trying to. Um, just trying to fill in our poke debts and, uh, yeah. And grind a little bit of exp more experience out. Obama Snow, the frost tree Pokemon, grass and ice type. They appear when the snow flop 
flowers bloom. When the petals fall, they retreat to places unknown again. There's an Obama Snow in Pokemon, um... X and Y that you really should be able to catch as, like, an event. Oh, that's a Delibird. I was like, what is that? <laughs> And the reason you should really be able to catch it is because it's basically like an event. And it almost seems like an event of Snow, Or like a story event of- I mean, it, it, it's directly tied to a story event that happens. Lucario vs. Cerulet. Well, we've seen this before. Uh, unfortunately, for you. For you. I have a massive level advantage. <laughs> I think Arvin's team, when we fought him, I think they were a higher, about the same level that we're at now. Oh, Primeape. More importantly, Beartick. Um, do I have a Primeape? I do. I wonder what this Primeapple Terrasal- I do wonder what the Primeapple Terrasal is into. Probably a dark type, right? So it's immune to, uh, um, Psychic type? Maybe a Rock type- um, maybe a Rock type instead. Beartick, the freezing Pokemon! Ice type! Beard is the white, the snow white demon in northern lands. Beardick uses its frosty claws and fangs to attack prey. That's like it's a unique move, or gets a move called Icicle Crash. Well, I guess we're fighting this primate. Oh, poison type. Yeah, I don't know what that does for it. That doesn't fit psychic type weakness. That that only makes it not weak to fairy <laughs> anymore. Um. Is it? I don't know if it's still considered the first turn or not. I'm not gonna bother. Because I haven't quite made one of the Let's Go games, I just need to actually go back and finish them. Uh, the thing I am after... First off, there's an ace... somewhere that we've... Passed up before. I think they were over there. Uh, but the main thing I'm after is I think it's that way. It's such a uh, there's weaviles. Around and yes, I know we have Void or High Frost Moth. I'm gonna grab you real quick. Wow, you broke free. That was a mistake. <laughs> I'm giving you. I am giving you one Ultra Ball, and then I'm killing you. Alright, time to die. You know what? I shouldn't, because generally, with Pokémon, the better stats they, they have... 
the more likely, uh, the less likely they are to be caught, or the better they are overall. It'll have something like a really good nature for this for, for, for it, or really good IVs, or something like that. But if I hit this thing with anything, it will die, so... Fine, luxury ball. Are you serious? Then you get a regular Pokeball. I'm so confused. This thing get, keeps getting three shakes and then breaking free. This thing isn't shiny or anything, because if it was shiny, it would have done a sparkling effect. I don't think it's shiny. Hey, yeah! Excuse me. Okay, I can finally attack it. <laughs> Hold on, let me look real quick. Shiny Frost Moth. Yeah, it looks like it has like green wings. Oh, and the eyes are a different color, too. The eyes are, like, green and pink rather than blue and green. Alright. Let's try... Let's try a Shadow Sneak. Okay. We can hit it one more time with Shadow Sneak. no interest in trying to raise a frost moth. <laughs> Fog and ice is just such a god-awful combination. Because you take four times damage. Or you take super effective damage from basically everything. <laughs> frost moth! The frost moth Pokemon! Ice and bug type. It causes blizzards as it flies around with its huge, chill, emanating wings. Clean melt water is its favorite thing to drink. Ice and toggle. I guess I could switch Tritzy up front. Oh, you know what? Hmm, Tritzy doesn't have any pivot moves anymore. That's fine. I was thinking about giving uh, Tritzy Ice Punch over Acrobatics so that we can more safely, um, or so that we can give her a held item, but I think we're good with what we currently got. One, two, three, click, me. Bronzong, the bronze bell Pokemon, steel and psychic type. It brought rains by opening portals to another world. It was revered as a bringer of revered as a bringer of plentiful harvests. I slurred together, revealed and revered there. Which is <laughs> actually 
funny if you think about it, because, um... Okay, I was looking very carefully at the colors there. Um... Because I don't know what shiny cub shoe looks like. I don't know what a lot of what most shinies look like off the top of my head. <laughs> I think most people who don't, like, actively shiny hunt basically everything don't know every shiny color off the top of their head. Ah, here he is. You need more data. I don't know what type he's gonna have. I decided my research subject for the day. Allow me to collect some data from you. Sounds like Ignacio the Scientist. Magnezone! That's terrifying, actually. Uh, the only one I really have that's good for that would be... Malice. Even then... Well, the good news is, um... For Muck. I don't have a ground type move. I don't have a. I don't have ground or psychic, so I guess my best bet would just be to stick with Malice. Could have the seventh team member, I would absolutely go with um Claudesire. Simply because it's another one of those Pokemon like I feel like the two Pokemon they basically designed this generation or story around you having are uh Tinkaton and Claudesire. Uh, because, like, there's so many times when ground and poison would have come in massive, would have been, like, very useful to have. I guess I should check this den mod since I'm right next to it. Ice type Sableye? I'm not interested. <laughs> Sableye, it, I, Sableye, because Sableye has one of two abilities, Prankster or Stall. Gardevoir rare, so... Gardevoir, the Embrace Pokémon. Psychic and Fairy-type. It unleashes... It, it unleashes Psychic Connect... 
kinetic energy at full power when protecting a trainer it has bonded closely with. There, we got the entire line. Hi, Titan. Bye, Satan. That's Pukamuku. Look at the game says that God of War up here very are very rare to appear. I will give the game the benefit of the doubt and catch a God of War if I see it. <laughs> <gasps> Thunderbolts! Amazing! I'm actually real. Did we. Wait, did we not craft that? Ooh, a shell loss. Uh, it's interesting that it becomes bug tight because. Oh, there we are, Wee Wild. Alright, you'll do. I just need to capture you for the sake of, um. spamming my Pokédex. Are you kidding me? I don't know what to do now. Um, I guess maybe Jet Punch won't KO it? We do have... We do have a Weavile in Voider. Poor Weavile, man. <laughs> He's doing his best. Weavile, the sharp claw Pokemon. Dark and ice type. They travel in groups of four or five, leaving signs for one another on trees and rocks. They bring down their prey with coordinated attacks. Okay, then why was this one by itself? Also, holy lag. Oh, holy lag. Oh, holy lag. What is happening? Why is all the lag? Um... I guess we can go fight the shell loss. Um, this is r a little rough because it's a. Oh dear. <laughs> I've been putting. I've been filling up my pots of Pokemon that I'm not supposed to really be using. Uh, but as I was saying. Or rather, the Pokémon that I'm like, hey, I like this Pokémon. <sighs> so this is rough because it's a grass water that- or a ground water that turns into a bug. It's a- it's got a really good Terra type. I guess Kilowattra would probably be bet, my best bet because, um... We're- uh, because we deal super effective damage, and the most we take is neutral, uh, water damage. J 
challenge alone. It's only a two-star raid, so... Should not be terribly difficult. There's also the chance this is just a shiny, by the way. <laughs> it is not. Yeah, see, that sand dial is a terrible choice. I didn't expect that. I mean, technically it's a water type, so dive ball should work. It's no muscle, but I, I honestly think the blue um, Gastrodon looks better than the blue pink one. Blue shell up and I was gonna say, not sure if they can break out of that or not. I haven't seen it yet. It may be a thing. It may be more of a thing of like higher level raids. Uh... Shellos, the sea slug Pokemon, East Sea form, or um, water type. This Pokemon can be uh, can often be seen along seashores. It's capable of spending a limited amount of time on land. Uh. So that's a little awkward because. Um, Uh, that's a little awkward because we, uh, I said that it was a water and ground type. I keep forgetting that Shellos is a water type, and then Gastrodon is a water and ground type. So when it evolves, it gains ground, the ground type. There's not a lot of Pokemon, even with, like, starters that do that. <laughs> like, I think starters are, like, the most common, but even then, like... A lot of them just retain their first form typing. Even in like, if you go all the way up to like Gen 3, Gen 4 was the only one where they gained, where all of them gained a secondary type. Or it was the first one where they all gained a secondary typing. And then Gen 5, they don't all gain a secondary typing. And they gain a secondary typing in Gen... They all gain secondary typings in Gen 6. Uh, I think in 7 as well? Let's see, 7 was Grass Ghost, Fire Dark, and Water Fairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gen 8, I mean, it's just Grass, Water, Fire... Back to basic Grass, Water, Fire, and then we have, well, this, which is... I think they all gain, uh, cause it, because Meowskarot is Grass Dark. I think it's a Wacklevel is a Water, I think Wacklevel is a Water and Fighting type, and I think Skeledurge is a Ghost, is a go Fire and Ghost type. Which is kind of annoying, because we have, like, we have Cerule Edge as a really good Fire and Ghost type, so that's like, you're filling the niche of, or one of the, Potential starter niches with another Pokemon. Golden Go is also like a really, really powerful ghost type. Uh, but let's continue with our classes, which is the main reason we're doing this today. Uh, we'll probably work more on the Pokédex next time. At the moment, I'm just kind of padding. We're just kind of doing some padding stuff. 
Hello, hello. I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. You all did really great on the midterm exam. And thanks for answering my little question at the end, too. I'll be sure to keep your responses in mind. Alright, we're now heading into the last half of our classes together. It's time for our knowledge to evolve and grow just like our Pokémon. Evolution. Yep, haha, <laughs> evolution. Today we're going to learn about the fascinating phenomenon of Pokémon evolution. As your Pokémon battle and level up, they learn moves and get stronger. For some Pokémon, once they've leveled up enough, their appearance changes and their stats increase, sometimes by a lot. That's Pokémon evolution. Pokémon become very strong when they evolve, making them trusty partners in battle. But some people prefer to keep their Pokémon in their adorable pre-evolved states. To do this, you, must rem uh, you just need to remember a certain button uh, when your Pokémon begins to evolve. Say it with me. If you already know, to cancel evolution, press the B button. That's right, everyone. B for best answer. Uh, the button you want when you need to stop a Pokemon from evolving is the B button. If you press this button soon after a uh, Pokemon begins to evolve, you can stop it from changing. You can also let the Pokemon hold an item known as an Everstone to keep it from evolving. And keep in mind that the requirements for evolution differ from Pokemon to Pokemon. Yeah, like for example, Malice, we had to have a specific item to evolve it. So may evolve by having a certain item such as a Firestorm and Thunderstone used on them. Others may have to learn a specific move or defeat a specific Pokemon in battle to evolve. We haven't seen that second one, to my knowledge. The way Primeape evolves into a Nihilate is bit especially strange. You see, there's a certain move that... Oh, interesting! So Primeape, uh, uh, so Primeape evolves to Annihilate people with a certain move. Okay. attention. Can I pursue that line of questioning further? Uh... Is there anyone around? Oh, time... Everybody wants to speak. I swear, a culture. Huh. STEM track. Science technology. I forget what the E stands for, maybe I'll like, Uh, the M is math. Economics, maybe? Oh my, if it's, Oh my, if it isn't Tiki. Please forgive me if it is, it's an odd question. Can we perhaps want to move from afar just now? I just got here, lady. Yes, I suppose you wouldn't have been doing something like that. I'm sorry. You see, how should I put this? There's still have been times where I felt ill as if I'm being watched. Not by a Pokemon, mind you, but by a person. I thought it might be a ghost, so I tried asking my sister for help. She said it most likely isn't one. She's good with ghost-type Pokemon, you know. Perhaps one of my students is quietly watching me, waiting for a chance to ask a question? Hmm, maybe? Goodness, if, if that wasn't an intense gaze I felt, if you notice someone with a sort of fire in their eyes, come t tell me, would you? If they're too shy to come ask me themselves, then I'll go to them. And even closer with Miss Time. I need somebody to tell me good job. Good job, kid. Uh, 
to go to the art room. Why, if it isn't Tiki, I have a question for you. Do you find my class difficult? Just right for me. That is certainly good to hear. So, Tiki, you chose to take home the gems as part of your treasure hunt. That must mean you like Pokemon dolls, is that correct? Sure. But naturally becomes skilled at doing what they enjoy. That must be why you're so strong. Ah, uh, do forgive me for springing such an odd question on, on you so suddenly. I find myself pondering the nature of strength these days. Anyway, thank you again for your input, Tiki. Slightly closer with Mr. Hassel. Part 2? No part 2. Not yet, anyway. Thank you again for your outstanding work on Operation Starfall. I cannot tell you how relieved I am that we were able to help Miss Penny as we did, and I know she is extremely grateful for you, to you for your part in all this. So I have one more thing to ask you, though the request is admittedly of a delicate nature. Do you think you could continue being good friends with Miss Penny as you have thus far? You bet! I must say, I truly am glad to have you as one of my students at the Academy. I believe you've more than earned this small token of my appreciation. Pertained a big nugget. Ooh! I hope that you will always stay just as wonderful as you are now, Miss Tiki. We formed a close bond with Director Clavel. Like how our options are yes or yes. Alright. Uh. Let's see, where is Sengor? Ah, uh, here he is. <laughs> oh, Tiki! Did you come all the way here to the staff room just to see me? All the way here? Ha <laughs> ha, it seems I've finally made it into the hearts of my students. That makes me try happy. After all, like I said in class, communication is very important. If there's anything you're confused about in class, or if you're having trouble here at the academy, you can always come here and tell me, Tonami, and me, Tonami Salvatore, or your friend Salvatore, that is. We I? Came slightly closer with Mr. Salvatore. Hi. Ah, you're. you're. ah, yes, Tiki from Class 1A. The way you conduct yourself in my class and, it's, and the answers you give to my questions, I admit they pique my interest. You're quite an, the interesting pupil, I must say. Tell me, Tiki, given your choice, which do you prefer? Things of old or things that are new? I like old things, actually. Like, older. Like, I like history. <laughs> ah, so you prefer the things of the past, do you? The potential I saw in you was real after all. Yes, this one may be indeed of good use to me someday. Ah, uh, you can disregard it. I was simply thinking out loud. I enjoyed our little conversation today. You have my thanks, Tiki. Okay, slightly closer with Miss Ryford and have big, f have had big foreshadowing, um, potentially. To like a post game, to like a potential post game thing.
Ah, you're in the kitchen. The cafeteria. Also, new kid. Fancy meeting you here in the home economics classroom. What a coincidence, eh? What brings you here? So, uh, well, you see. Miss Dundra tells me she is here for intensive training in sandwich making. Oh, well, no, he's hiding it now. Oh dear, I'm terribly sorry. Were you keeping this a secret? I mean, not to really, and not really, but it just doesn't look very cool to openly admit I'm here for intensive training, you know? And nothing wrong with learn with wanting to improve. Understood, I will be more careful in the future. Well, no, kid, nothing to know what I'm up to. I guess I'll just have to help me out with my training here. Try this sandwich. It's the result of my training so far. Just a sandwich was soggy and hard to eat, and once again, the taste left must to be desired. That was my meat lover's, uh, Pasquia, Pasquito. Oh, bacon and chorizo sandwich. How was it? Give me some more veggies. What? You mean there was a problem with my choice of filling? I guess focusing too much on muscle building ingredients really did a number on the flavor. Aha. Uh -huh. Miss Indra, I believe a simple addition of butter would have done wonders for your sandwich. Butter helps to protect the bread from getting soggy due to the moisture of the ingredients. It can also work to enhance the sandwich's flavor. Butter! That makes sense! Thank you for teaching me that tip, Mr. Sanguaro. But why didn't you tell me that while I was making the sandwich? Uh, well, you see, when I saw uh, you, I had not realized you had big deal on your, um, your, ahem, uh, <clears throat> food prep. I thought you were simply trying to destroy my classroom. Well, anyway... New Kid! Thanks to you and Mr. Sanguaro here, I may finally be getting the hang of this. Thanks for your advice. Came even closer with Miss Dendra. One day you'll learn how to uh, not use rotten ingredients. Yeah. Oh, uh, hold on. What? He's not actually in here. That's a very funny oversight. <laughs> Uh, I guess we'll go to the- we'll just go to the art room and then back. <laughs> That's a very funny oversight. Welcome to the home economics classroom. I consider this to be my very own castle of sorts. Miss Tiki from class 1A. Rumors of your activities always seem to be even bombarding me from all sides. My activities? Indeed, people from all over have been talking about how strong a battle you are and how amazing uh, and the amazing Pokemon you take along with you. You are quite the object of everyone's interest, though I imagine that may be a bother for you. The home economics classroom is something of a place of rest for the academy students, you see. Here, they delight in sharing the latest gossip and the light while enjoying the light snack. We come up quite often in those talks recently, Miss Tiki, so much that I find myself intrigued. It is not a burden for you, I very much enjoy having you see me come again sometime. Go the caf oh, we have part two in the cafeteria already. That's so weird, by the way, that we Well I have a warm sandwich that we can't get egg power from five alarm sandwich. I do have any stuffing and different sauce. Ham and egg sandwich, or rather, just egg sandwich, potato salad sandwich, peanut butter sandwich, 
and pickle sandwich. Hello, Miss Tiki of Class 1A. You can just call me Tiki. Um, it has been some time since we last met. Are you here to eat as well? Yep, I'm starving. Ha, excellent. You shouldn't battle on an empty stomach. I myself am here to survey the sort of cafeteria, let's say. I'm observing the nutritional content of the food that our students partake of on a regular basis. One item on the menu that I'm particularly interested in is the peanut butter sandwich. It is sweet and quite delicious. You use peanut butter and bananas, right? Perhaps, yes, perhaps I will order one right now. Look, it's Mr. Saguaro. He's so fashionable and cool. Look, it's Mr. Saguaro. He's so fashionable and cool. I guess the teacher's come to the cafeteria in two, huh? Do you think he'll have an egg sandwich? No way. If anything, if he gets anything here, it'll definitely be something spicy with the five alarm sandwich. He's so cool. He'll definitely get that wild and spicy five alarm sandwich. Could I have a five alarm sandwich? I do enjoy the thrill of spicy food. No, oh, have a peanut butter sandwich, dude. You said you wanted to get a peanut butter sandwich. Get a peanut butter sandwich. Uh, yes, you suggested I have a peanut butter sandwich, Mr. Kia. I suppose I shall have to try one, if you insist. That was close. I almost forced myself have to order something spicy. My least favorite of flavors. Uh, I thank you for restraining me, Miss Tiki. But since the students tend to view me as fashionable and cool, or even, dare I say it, exuding a sort of brooding strength, I have a habit of acting in such a way as it was not to destroy their image of me. I show my, my true colors to you just now without thinking. Please keep this a secret between us. Even closer with Mr. Saguaro. I mean, the, that's really weird. <laughs> like, ah. Uh, I, however, don't mind spicy food being a Louisianan. We have so much money. <laughs> Lob sandwich. Oh, look at Tinkerton! You must have been hungry. Well, take care out there, dear. Where do I want to go? Uh oh. Schoolyard. We're trying to do everything we can in the schoolyard. Uh, Gengar versus Houndour. Houndour has the type advantage, but Gengar should win simply because of being fully evolved versus not fully evolved, and probably a much higher level as well. Hey, a Gyarados! Uh, but Gengar should win that because every Gengar should Pretty, most Gengars carry Thunderbolt, um, Shadow Ball, I guess maybe, I guess maybe Gengar may not have Thunderbolt, but most of them will carry a little special sweeper moveset. Why are there two Gengars here? There's three gang- Why are there so many Gengars in this school? Hey, Drifloon! We haven't seen those in a while, there's a fourth Gengar. There's so many ghost types, man. I wanna get my ghost type out. Alice is going to destroy everything. Hello there, Tiki. 
I try to visit the schoolyard from time to time. It's good to see young ones with so much energy and vigor. Uh, you think so? Well, yes, indeed. Just watching it is enough to make even an old man like me feel even more alive. Mr. Hassel, might I have a word? You, what are you doing here? I have told you many times not to bother me here at the Academy. Yet I am bound to come. Our family's future is of paramount importance. It was good speaking with you, Tiki. Something important has come up. Oh, I must excuse myself now. Here we go. <laughs> and I guess that's the end of the conversation. Let us discuss this matter elsewhere. Come. of the school. I'm not so sure. Great. Uh... Oh, it's a Kawara. Okay. <laughs> I'm in a bit of a pinch. Take a look at this. Your palm? This palmy doesn't really doesn't seem to be feeling well. I don't know if the poor thing can even stand up. What should I do? What should I do? There's a potion on it. Oh, right. I could use a potion. Do you have any on you? What? You don't? Ah, uh, what should I do? What should I do? Well, I'll, hold on. I had to touch one potion in my pocket. Ah, uh, that's false. I have super potions and hyper potions and lemonades and everything. This will be if it's you right up, my friend. Potion power, go! Phew, that seems to have done the trick just in the nick of time. But this palmy doesn't appear to belong to a trainer. Hmm, could a wild Pokemon have wandered onto the academy grounds? Still, I can't just leave it. You're alone without anyone to make sure it's okay. It's decided then. I shut Salvatore. We'll just have to we'll lend all the helping hands I have to care uh, uh, of me. Uh, to take care of me in this touch and go situation. Merci very much for your advice, Tiki. Adios, au revoir, farewell. Man, Gale moves real slowly. <laughs> Nelscarada's. Nelscarada's pretty quick. Pandora is about the speed of the player, maybe a little bit slower. Trixie is a little... Uh, Palafin's a little slower, and... Uh, that's a Pandora, but Tinkaton. 
and kill a wash roll is way faster. <laughs> It's weird not having, um... Not having flip turn for... Tritzy. But at the same time, I feel like... Realized Rooster only had five power points. I guess that made sense. Also, uh, actually, no, I was thinking of doing Rain Dance and a Rain Dance and Thunder combo with Kill a Watch Roll, Rain Dance, Thunder, Hurricane. How did I miss it twice? Did I miss it twice? There it is. <laughs> it's gonna be a little weird not having a um, flip turn on Tritzy. To the entrance hall, then. So, is there anywhere where we can talk to more, um, more people? Also, I'm shaking my desk. Math. done on the midterm exam. Some of you earned perfect scores, but others seem to have a bit of trouble, but I can tell only that you all tried your best. I'm quite pleased to say that every last one of you passed. I can only assume this this means you all uh, you have all come to love numbers. Stay sharp and try your best for the rest of my classes too. Speaking of staying sharp, do you know what word applies, uh, how that word applies to Pokemon battles? That's right, it has to do with stat boosts. Pokemon stats can rise and fall throughout the course of battle, correct? For example, if a Pokemon uses the move War Cup, its attack and special attacks rise by one stage each. Uh, they deal 50% more damage per stage. And then two stages total, which is double damage. Stance twice by four stages. Uh, it would deal triple damage. That's great. You answered this difficult question with ease. Raised by four stages would be a 200% increase. The base move is 100%, adding 200%, that gives 300%. Tight matchups for critical hit damage, another effect is all fell into the calculation, so even a small boost must be taken seriously. Uh, by the way, the set simply rose, that would mean you know, with one stage is sharply as two stages, drastically as three. As second special attack can. Uh, 
give plus two and can all be used in battle. Ugh. Okay, that's getting into uh, a little bit more advanced mechanics, but not too, too bad. If you understand the basic of, oh, one, the two stat boosts is basically an increase of 100%. It was mostly the wording that is a little confusing there, with, um... With that. Because they're, they're saying if you boost it two stages, how much damage does it do? So you think, oh, uh, they just, so you think, oh, it does double damage. Or they, they say two stages is double damage, so four stages is, but you have to consider one, two stages equals a plus 100% damage, so four stages is 200% damage, and then add that 200% to the 100%, and that's 300%. Like was said. It's just a little confusing how they worded it. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did, uh, whatever you did yesterday was part of history. Or, uh, ability to cause has been spectacularly derailed by my midterm. Standing things up for fun and variety may be a good idea every now and then. But, uh, an old fairy tale has been passed down in Caldea for generations. Once upon a time, there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. He was particularly fond of treasures from other countries. One day, a merchant came uh, from the east, heard rumors of this king, and came to meet him. The merchant laid out four treasures in front of the treasure-loving king. Four treasures were as follows. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. Oh, these are the four ruin things that we've been seeing. Seeing such rarities before him, the king leaped for joy. He showered the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four of the treasures for himself. Aha! For timing to make an eye contact. One of the treasures was a set of tablets. What do you think these tablets were? Wooden points for writing on? Uh, correct, your daily pursuit and knowledge serves you well. Th these particular tablets were wooden and used as writing medium in the East in ancient times. Uh, though, I are, in real life, they were, uh, in the Middle East, they used clay tablets, uh, because there aren't, there weren't trees around. As you know, they fell out with popular use as paper became more universally available. For the king to consider these paper substitutes treasures, they must have been of superb quality. That, or perhaps they had some amazingly profound teachings written on them. So the king obtained these four treasures, and on that very night, they said that a terrible disaster rained down upon this castle, reducing it to rubble by dawn. Oh, is it the, the time already? I wasn't done with the story, but the last seven is today's legend. If you want to know, if you're interested in how the story ends, you may come see me outside class hours. I'm doing that. I need to know, I want to know, I want to know the rest of this story. Because we found the doors that say the ruinous tablets, the ruinous beads, the ruinous vessel. Oh, she's right here at the entrance hall. Neat. Why for this Tiki from Class 1A? Are you interested in the rest of the tale I told you in class? I am. <laughs> it, is very, it is convenient that you would take the bait I've presented in class. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. After obtaining these four treasures, the king's castle was destroyed. Why, you ask? Because these four treasures were actually four Pokémon. 
as these Pokemon were passed from human hand to human hand as treasures, they slowly became tainted by hubris and greed. Finally, after coming in contact with the rapacity of the king at that time, they awakened as disasters and began to rampage out of control. The king called forth po renowned Pokemon wielders to defeat to defend the country, and after a fierce battle, these incarnations of disaster were quelled. It is said that these four Pokemon were then sealed away somewhere in Paldea. So what do you think? Would you say this story is just make-believe? No. Huh, very astute of you. I have read many historical disaster reports for soul journals and the like. There's much to support the, the truth of this story. If I am able to prove the story's veracity myself, I will be sure to let you know. And even closer with Miss Rifle. Uh, lady, I can literally take you to one of these doors. Hello, uh, the one from Kevin. I can literally take you to, like, at least three different locations that can confirm the truth of this story. And the only reason I I say three is because I know the fourth one is like somewhere up in somewhere in this general area along along the coast because uh, we've seen all four do all four of the doors we just haven't one is like right here one is up uh one is right here I believe. And one is right here. I just haven't found all the stakes. <laughs> Where do I want to go? The cafeteria. I feel like that should. I fe that feels like it should have been more of a side quest than how they have implemented it. Um, where is, up oh, there she is, over here. She's called Chef Duty? Tiki? You scared me. Are you cooking something? Oh no, I'm not here for any food related, for any food related at all. I was just walking around the entrance hall. I felt that intense gaze I told you about before. So I quickly ducked in the cafeteria here. Our cafeteria has only one entrance, so I thought I might be able to discover the identity of the person watching me if they followed me in here. Ah, someone's come just now. Huh? That's weird. I thought I saw her come in here. I guess I won't be able to ask my question today, either. That girl, I feel like I've seen her several times before. Why are you hiding from a student this time? She seems to be a student here, but I get the feeling that her question is not about studies. Next time I see her, maybe I'll go start up a conversation myself. It could have been a little scary being here on my own. I'm glad you were here with me. So trusted by Miss Time. Is the history teacher the one that tells you how to get the stakes? Um, I don't know. I've just seen the states around and been pulling them up as as I find them. <laughs> but we've definitely seen we definitely seen the door, all the doors, and we've seen like the. I think I want to say at this point we probably found the majority of the stakes just kind of on our own. I definitely feel like that should be like that should have been like a side quest though. Rather than just, oh, there's the stake, let's go interact with it. Maybe just, maybe just, maybe have a think of like, there's an ominous black stake, uh, we should probably leave it alone for now, or we should probably ask someone at the academy about them. You know, something like that. A little, something a little more than just, have I beaten the game yet? I have not beaten the game yet. We have two gem, we have two gems left, uh, but I want to, before I do that, I want to get all the, uh, school stuff taken care of. Because, uh, 
Uh, just, just to see what all we get from it. Because uh, we, we got a big nugget from the director. We've gotten small... We got some small ESP candies from the um, midterms, but we'll... We'll see what we get. Uh, also, probably going to do some a little bit more grinding for um my Poké debts just just for the sake of experience. Um, how did you do on your midterm? Or how did you like the midterm? You all did really great. We're halfway in there, and now time for another lesson. It's a full play. Are you ready? Oui. Try bon last bon. Good answer. I. Uh, red poems, actually. Uh, I apologize for any words that I butcher in this. The only languages I really know are Latin-based, and I don't are, well, the only languages that I really know are English and Latin, and I'm, like, words that I see that I'm, like, unfamiliar with, um, I try to derive the pronunciation from Latin? So, if it's just complete, so if I'm just completely wrong, I apologize. <laughs> Merci, my friends. I knew I could count on you stars. A lot of, of which some words are more commonly, are more commonly, um, heard and more commonly known, but, um, yeah. Leading up to the midterm, we learned all sorts of words from different regions. Starting today, though, I'll be throwing a curveball before we begin listening comprehension. Vasi, go for it. Right, my pocket, my assistant, Pika P, Pika Two. Pika Two. As we just heard, Pokemon can also use words to communicate. It's not easy. Always easy for us to understand them, but their words have meaning just as ours do. Pokemon can use language to share all kinds of information with each other, like the location of food or whether or there may be predators nearby. The same Pokemon's cries may sound different depending on what it wants to say. I'm sure you're all curious, so I saw we need today that is, let's learn some Pokemon language. Jetin Mprie. Yeah. If you'd be so kind, Pikachu. Pika! What emotion do you suppose this Pikachu was trying to convey just now? Uh. Say it one more time. Pika! Happiness. Hmm. When Pikachu says Pika. It's angry voice. I suppose I think thank you. That's right, I have my little Pikachu friend here pretend to be angry for us. I don't even think that was an op- I don't, I don't even remember angry was an option there. Don't you think he did a great job? Give Pikachu do a round of applause, everyone. The same Pokémon can even communicate its feelings in many different ways. Their voices change depending on their mood and physical condition. Try listening more carefully to Pokémon, you might gain a deeper understanding of them. That having been said, Pokémon are quite mysterious creatures. Some actually don't communicate with words at all, but instead use things like electromagnetic or ultrasonic waves. Some even use telepathy. And now, apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. If you poke at your Pokémon too many times while watching them during picnics, they'll get mad at you like Pikachu just demonstrated. Well, adios, matane, a la prochaine. Uh, uh, see you later, everyone. Never seen a Pikachu in this game. Got it. Uh, they are Pichus in it. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Look at that. I maybe have caught one. Uh, that shouldn't be visible in the Pokédex. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, that's... Why is I not... Why am I not able to see my... Oh, here we go. Uh... Order... I'm pretty sure... I've, yeah, well, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure we've caught a Pichu, and we've actually caught both. Uh, they are... I yeah, just... They're just in, well, those highlighted areas. Although, it says they're rarely seen, so... Maybe we just got lucky with the one that we caught. Pichu, obviously, is just available at the starting, in some of the starting areas. Yes, not- uh, your everyday legendary- uh, okay, so for- for those who don't know, this is a legend- this is the silhouette of one of the- po the- one of the Pokémon we just heard about from the lady? Uh, from the history lady? One of the Ruin Pokémon? I, I think this is the tablets one? I could be mistaken. no, I think this- this might be the- the Vessel one. But it's really weird that that's just a silhouette in the poke. That that's just a silhouette. That that definitely shouldn't be showing in terms of like that 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 shouldn't be like a a readily visible Pokemon in the Pokédex, in my opinion. <laughs> uh. Oh. Dragon everywhere. Is this the silhouette? Oh yeah, that's the. Oh, you know what? It's because we have Golden Go. <laughs> is the tablet somehow correct? Uh, the reason the reason I'm saying it's the vessel is because it looks kind of like a slug. It it might be the tablet, so I don't know. <laughs> Luxury balls, get speed candies. I've been. I keep forgetting to claim these. Moonstone, need that. Time rolls. Star piece. Kind of pointless. Ooh, that's interesting. I wonder what those are. I don't think I've seen those types of Pokeballs before now. Oop, I B button mashed a little too much. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, Let's do a few more classes before we explore around the thing a little, the map a little more. Another day, another round of battle study. Osu, let's get right to it. You all keep everything you've had on the midterm exams. Well done. We'll resume more regular classes today, so keep up that energy for the second half of the term. You all been using the R button to send out your Pokemon? If you do, your Pokemon will run off in the direction you're facing. It's a super useful tactic that lets you pick up your Pokemon pick up faraway items for you, and that's not all. If there's a wild Pokemon near where you sit your Pokemon, they'll start battling each other. Oh, thank you for the follow, uh, Kevin. Uh, we call those auto battles. You get majorly reduced experience, though, for doing that. We, as, we, because we've tried those out, and, like, we, you, I think you get, like, a tenth of the experience. It's really weird. It may have been a bug that they patched out. Uh, but, like, it just, it, it's a lot faster, if you're, if you're trying to grind for levels, it's a real, it really feels like it's a lot faster to just not auto-battle, or to just do a regular battle. Just as the name implies, your Pokémon will act on its own during auto-battles, meaning you won't have to give it any commands. And if your Pokémon wins, it'll gain get speed points, just like it would in a regular battle. Yeah, okay, that must have been a bug then. Uh, because... Like, we, we, uh, like, I even tested it, like, with, like, a couple of battles, and we did, like, a couple auto battles where we were getting two experience per battle, and then... We... Bat, and then when we threw, uh, and then when we did a, a like, a not auto battle, we gained, like, 20 experience from the same... From the same thing. 
If you make really good use of these battles, it can be a really efficient way to train your party. But you'll want to remember that Pokemon won't evolve or learn new moves right away if they level up from an auto battle. Also, if your Pokemon loses an auto battle, it'll come back with just a small amount of HP left. Make sure to heal it up right away. Also, doesn't use up power points. Yeah, I, I, we, we've learned that from the Team Star uh, stuff. Whoops, I just did a whole class as a once and a lecture. Does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, how do I stop an auto battle? There's no stopping an auto battle once it starts. You'll have to wait and see how it plays out. You can call your Pokemon up before the battle starts, though if you press ZR while your Pokemon is still on the way to the opponent. Even during auto battles, our Pokemon are out there battling for us, their trainers. Just keep an eye on them as much as possible, and if it looks like they're going to lose, be sure to have them retreat. Also, this goes without saying, but a Pokemon with low HP, but Pokemon with low HP are already worn out. They probably won't enjoy auto battles as much, so don't work them too hard, okay? In conclusion, auto battles only work if a trainer and their Pokemon that have a relationship of mutual trust. Be smart with how you use auto battles, so you don't lose the trust of the Pokemon. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. Uh, hey Tritzy, go nuts! Except for against the Leafy, be sure you use acrobatics on the just or be sure you use acrobatics on the Leafy on. <laughs> you don't wait, wait, it just happens. Uh, uh, we're out of time. Class is over now. Take care, of you. Where are you, little rascals? Yeah, we've we've seen all we've but like we've had to use the auto battle for the team star stuff. But I've been I I haven't been using it because it, like like we we definitely tried it out early on and we and I was like there was a major experience dis uh, discrepancy where we were getting like a tenth of the experience that we would have gotten from a regular battle. Um, and obviously we can't catch stuff during an auto battle. Fortunately. With auto battling, uh, they don't KO. You can't auto, or you, you won't auto battle like a shiny. Oh, wrong button. Did I battle Larry yet? I did. The last two, the only two gym leaders I have are the Ghost type one and the Ice type one. Uh, Arm Mixer Hassel. If I remember correctly, I basically swept him with my uh, Tinkaton because Steel type just resists everything he had. Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. I'm pleased to say everybody did well on the midterm exams. As a reward for all of your hard work, we have a special guest missing us today. Is it Professor Gibble again? Oh, hey, there's Penny. Now then, Brassy, please come in. Great. Greetings. Oh, Brassius. Uh, Brassicus? I forgot what his name is. Brassius, okay. I am Brassius. I am an artist and I focus exclusively on grass type Pokemon for my work. Brassius here mainly creates three dimensional pieces, such as statues and the like. One of his major works is an installation titled Surrendering Sun Floor, found in Artisan. Uh, many of you who've challenged the artisan gym are no doubt familiar with these sculptures. Yes, I do recognize some faces among your students. I hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Haas's class. This old Haas is a, a man who saved me when I had lost all hope and had given up on myself. But he never gave up on me. I do not exaggerate when I say that he is my mentor in life. It is precisely thanks to Haas that I was able to who established my current art style. Ah, oh, dear Brassy, I'm nothing against reminiscing about old times, but today I hope you will guide this class in a way only you can. Of course. 
Let's see. Uh, why don't we discuss what Haas mentioned? Surrendering some floor. Can anyone hear tell me what my mood was when I created its detached expression? I don't know, a sad mood maybe? No, 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 completely and utterly wrong. When I made that uh, sculpture, I'd surrendered all hope. I was prepared to give up everything. So it was more despair than sadness. I resolved to give up my life as an artist if that piece did not ever, uh, did not receive proper recognition. It's the name Surrendering Sunflora. That's exactly it, Haas. When I started out as an artist, I experienced many hardships. I even became deathly ill and fell into a slump that drove me to desperation. I began worrying about what would sell. I was concerned only with fame and fortune. But my pieces during this time had no depth. They were all shallow trash. It was then that I met Haas. He helped me realize how petty I was being. I'll spare you the details, but in the end I was able to leave all of that behind. And that is also when I crafted the sun floor. I don't know if I leveled it by asking I set a level 80 high tracking. Oh, yeah, that definitely, um, that definitely would do it. Uh, the good news is you don't have to worry about having to level up a dino uh, and then a Zwilus all the way to level 64 to get your high, to get a high try again. Remarkable. I did, even I did not know the full story until now. That is the kind of thing that is hard to tell someone, especially when they are so close to you. Now I don't doubt that you adolescents will often find your heads crowded with worries. My advice to you is simple. Be honest with yourself and do whatever your heart desires. So long as you don't cause trouble, that is. That is all from me. But I must I must admit, I am beginning to feel a bit embarrassed. So I bid you farewell, Haas. And farewell to your pupils as well. Oh, Brassy, I can't believe it. Such a wonderful class. Thank you. Thank you so much! I got a dragon pulled in Garchomp for one. <laughs> nice. Ah, nice. So you, so you were just wrecking everything with pseudo legendaries on your playthrough. Uh, although you probably had a, you probably had a little bit of trouble uh, against the fairy type guy. Uh, but then again, being extremely over leveled, maybe not too much. <laughs> uh, oh, Hassel is right around to speak. Nurse's office. Can I talk to you more? I'm still investigating that old fairy tale. You must wait for further reports from me. Oh, why, hello there, young Tiki. I'm sorry, I was lost in thought, and I didn't notice your approach. I must again apologize for what transpired in the schoolyard. What are you talking about? Of course, uh, uh, I'm, I'm of course referring to uh, how I rather suddenly had to t take my leave from, while we were still engaged in conversation. Oh, that! I thought he was talking about the battle with the director we had. <laughs> The woman who showed up as a dragon tamer, and a relative of mine, I might add. You see, I come from a very long line of trainers who specialize in dragon-type Pokémon. There was a child in our family who expected to stand at its head and lead it to greatness. But the lad, the young lad, had a rebellious little fellow well, that he was, ran away from home one day. Is his name Lance? Fairy Jim mean but I overpowered it by level 70 fire starter. <laughs> I mean, hey, it, hey, it worked. <laughs> he made quite the show or two, swearing he'd make a living with music. Huh. The Raihan, maybe? His 
Raihan does do like a social media thing in Galar. Oh! A lot has been since then. Now he- and now he is the art teacher and elite four member before you. Oh, it's him he's talking about. After I so rudely took my leave uh, during our last conversation, my dear relative- That lady needs more frames in the back. <laughs> uh, encouraged me to give up teaching and return home at last. I've been told the current leader of my family that is to say my father is in poor health. But I, oh, but I do apologize. Um, perhaps I'm not cut out for teaching after all. What sort of teacher grumbles on and on at his own student? You're a great teacher. Ah, uh, my dear teacher, you have no idea how much your words mean to me. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I'm trusted by Mr. Hassel. Yeah, I wish they would make a starter that's not... A, or not a sword, a uh, pseudo legendary other than Tyranitar and Metagross, not a dragon type. I was really hoping. Oh, and slacking technically. Uh, I was, I was really hoping this generation we would just have like a fairy type pseudo legendary or like a grass type pseudo legendary or something like that. But no, it's ice and it's an ice and dragon type. Uh, do Mac. Put away your phones, it is time to begin class. Though some of you had to retake the midterm exam multiple times, I'm glad to say the majority of the class passed without issue. I feel honored to see that the knowledge and skills indispensable for daily life have taken root in all of you. I trust that you will all work just as hard on your life skills in the second half of the course as well. Let us now turn our attention to the topic of the day, which I... Uh, which is inspired by a question I received on the subject of meal powers. The student who asked this question is a young man who enjoys the culinary arts. He tells me that he regularly researches culinary techniques on his own and pays careful attention to the ingredients he uses. He also spends day and night studying all aspects of the culinary arts. And despite this, he is baffled by his inability to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers. So tell me, Miss Tiki, since you did quite well on your midterm exam, what should our, ahem, <clears throat> this young man do to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers? Make food with other people? Question mark? Perfectly correct. I see that you are knowledgeable about the culinary arts. I like how we had the ability to say Arv and, and call him out directly. To increase the effectiveness of meal powers, your sandwiches must be filled, filled with many different ingredients. For a single person, this may prove difficult. But if you prepare a sandwich with others, you will be able to handle well, a larger serving of bread. With the larger base to start with, it becomes quite simple to add more ingredients to your sandwich. So prepare with the last time. Exaggerated it. I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah. So you you did the oh god, I could not imagine trying to do the Donos the false dragon will last. I did like the I did it uh, after the psychic gym, but I, let's see, I think I did. And then I did, like, the last two Team Star bases, and we still have two gems left. Uh, which in turn, it's impossible to receive real powers of increased effectiveness. This applies more broadly as well when dealing with a difficult issue, working with others to solve that issue may be the best course of action. I'm sure that Arvin will likewise work with his friends to craft his sandwiches in the future. 
<clears throat> the identity of the male student is a matter of privacy, so I would ask that you do not pry too deeply. Uh, our time together has come um, to an <laughs> and for today, I bid you all farewell. You got to get. You got to go. Ah, uh, no worries, dude. Have a good. Have a good uh, night. Go to nurse's office. No, poor giraffe rig. We can't talk to the giraffe rig. No way, no way! Come on, Miriam, just try it. What's wrong? Oh, great timing, you kid. Miss Miriam here won't try the sandwich I made. Well, duh, I don't want to get a stomach ache. You won't, probably. Ugh, I still remember that sandwich you made me with meat filling and meat for bread. That one really messed me up bad. I hadn't trained in the art of sandwich making yet back then. I was young and thoughtless and... Young and thoughtless? It was last month! <laughs> That's hilarious, actually. So, as you can see, I'm not gonna get anywhere trying to persuade her. After I went through all that intensive sandwich making training, it makes me kind of sad. She went through intensive sandwich making training? You really should try her sandwich. Ugh! I guess I have no cho- I have no choice if you got one of- our cute little students on your side. So fine. I'll try your sandwich. Let's see it. Yes! I knew you'd come around. Here it is. It's a little strangely flavored, but I guess it's not bad. Woohoo! My training paid off! I'm sure my sandwich pleases. Glad I'm so glad my and which please this is the great nurse Miriam. I look up to you, you know. I feel trusted by Miss Dendra. Thank you for trying it. Nice to see you too, new kid. Why am I still referred to as new kid? We've been here for like an for like half of the course. Please. And she's run off again. That was weird. But that's just how Miss Dendra is, I guess. She always she's always coming into the nurse's office with some injury or another, too. Oh dear. Uh, I may have to end things off before we actually fully finish this. Uh, so that I so that I can have time to eat before the... Oh! For, uh, the Forspoken stream. Oh, my dear Tiki! That's your advice from before. Paul me is well to see for yourself. Seems very quiet. Hmm, yeah, it's feeling better, but I suppose this Paul me may be just be a bit meek, I suppose. This particular Paul me. I had Nurse Miriam take a look as well, and she says there's nothing wrong with it health-wise. So it shouldn't have any injuries, ailments, or the like. Even so, it never utters so much as a cry, which is odd. Even that, that part has even Mr. Jacques here stumped. I'm sorry that I couldn't be of any help. Natine, take a pa! Don't worry about it. I may have some... I have some information 
Now they have the camera security cameras, though. It seems Pommy was attacked by a wild Pokemon right here to the Academy grounds. Maybe it's still a bit of shock from that experience and can't bring itself to speak yet. Yep, if that's the case, there's absolutely no problem with keeping quiet. Pas de problème. All that we cannot hinder, right? Wait, that is, until it feels like talking, that's all we can uh, do, really. We can just at attend, right? I don't know. Even if you can speak all sorts of languages, there's no guarantee that you can understand what's going on in someone's heart. But have no fear, I won't give up. No, I'll keep on trying until we've figured each other out. Feel trusted by Mr. Salvatore. Ah, here you are. Why are there like eight staff members in here? This Salvador. Hey, Pommy! You're talking! Pommy's doing great, it's just a bit of a quiet one. No, uh, it's definitely talking here. Was that the Riolu? Oh. Let's see, there's Miss Time, Salvador, Saguaro, and uh. Rifert, Rifert. Ah, oh, Miss Tiki. There's something that I would very much like to ask for your help with. What is it? Well, you see, I do not want anyone to overhear this, but... I hear rumors of an incredibly secret condiment that exists somewhere in the Valdea region. I absolutely must experience such ambrosial sweetness for myself. You are the only one who knows of my insatiable sweet tooth. Thus, I have no one else I can turn to for help in this matter. I cannot go looking for this condiment myself, lest I destroy the image students have of me. I will pay you for your troubles, of course. Give it some thought if this piques your interest. In the meantime, I'll gather what information I can about this incredibly sweet condiment. I will share what I find with you as soon as soon as I have more detailed information. Yeah, the Pokemon stream got cut a little bit short because of the new, uh, Nintendo Direct, but I didn't want to... I didn't want to start stream with Pokemon and then stop in the middle of Pokemon and switch over to the Nintendo Direct and then go back into Pokemon because that would have been... I don't know, I feel like that would have been really weird. <laughs> I thought we'd have done this the school stuff, um, but... I think we're gonna be a little bit short on time for that. But that's okay, we can finish this up on the next, the next time we, um... Stream this. Hello, hello! I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. But before we get going, do you all remember the final question from our midterm exam? Well, Director Clavel found out about it somehow, and I get yelled at. Whoops! I don't know why you would get yelled at for asking for feedback from the people that literally are using your app. Apparently you could tell I was hiding something just by looking at me. You must have noticed the, all the color flush right out of my face. <laughs> Speaking of color, I, today I'd like to teach you all about colors that pertain to Pokemon. Some Pokemon have slightly different coloration or pattern depending on their bodies based on their gender or individual differences. In very rare cases, Pokemon may have a wildly different coloration compared to the others of the same species. We call these specimens shiny Pokemon. It's quite rare to cross paths with one. Does anyone here know what 
find the likelihood of finding a shiny Pokemon is. Uh, one in fourth? It's actually uh, yeah, it's actually closer to one in forty-one hundred. It's one in four thousand ninety-six. It used to be one in eight thousand one hundred ninety-two. Back before I believe it was Generation Six, they made them more common. Uh, wow, that's right. You made the makings of a Pokemon, Professor Tiki. Shiny Pokemon appear at a rate of 1 in 4,000. Oh, maybe they buffed it some more so it's legitimately just 1 in 4,000. Isn't that amazing? The probability of encountering one in the wild is the same as hatching from an egg, too. Eggs come from a pair of Pokemon raised around different languages are a special case. There's a higher than average chance uh, that a shiny Pokemon will hatch from these eggs. But we haven't been able to figure out why that is just yet. I've also heard rumors of a charm that increases your likelihood of finding shiny Pokemon when you have it in your bag. Can you believe that? This... This smug... I guarantee this is the guy that you get the shiny charm from for completing the Pokedex. That claim can't be scientifically verified, but it sure would be fun if it were true. Oops, there's the bell. That's all for today. Thank you for your attention. This, this guy, speaking of, I need to do this, um, oh dear, uh, uh, selection bots, there, I actually like the design of Grifai Eye. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, Tough claws, how is it move that makes direct contact? I wish I could do more from my bots. <laughs> I don't know why I caught this in a Premier Ball. I guess because it had rough skin. This one, I know it's a shiny. Uh... be able to actually utilize Golden Go. The problem is, if I do that, then I'm getting rid of a Fairy type for a Ghost type. But I'm also or to double up on Ghost types. And then I have to get a new Fire type. Like, Golden Go would be really easy for me to work into a team with um, Armor Rogue, but not not uh, Silver Edge, or Armor Rouge, rather. Oh! I or okay, I guess. We can't take any more biology classes. That's weird. I wonder if we have to take more- I wonder if we have to complete more gems. Hello everyone, let's have a fun class today. Did you make sure to review last class's materials in order to stay sharp? 
kind of was a little difficult with all that talk of multiplication and percentages and the like. But today we'll be talking about percentages again to learn about probability. That may sound like we're going to have a difficult class, but do you know that all of you already deal with probability on a regular basis? That's true. Pokemon moves generally have a property called accuracy, which determines the probability that they will hit. The accuracy of tackle is 100, or 100%. So if you were to use Tackle 100 times, you could expect it to hit all 100 times. The move Hypnosis, which puts opponents to sleep, has an accuracy of 60, or 60%. That means you can expect it to hit 60 times in 100 uses. To test, to put that another way, out of 100 uses, you could expect it to miss 40 times. Many of the truly powerful moves tend to have lower accuracy. So, whether you're just, so when you're deciding whether to go slow and steady with moves that are sure to hit, or hard and fast with strong, with stronger but less accurate moves, you're already studying probability. Let me see here, perhaps Surf and Hydro Pump will be good examples for this discussion? Surf has a power of 90, its accuracy is 100, meaning you can expect it to hit every time. Hydro Pump's accuracy is only 80, but when it hits, its power is 110. So between Surf and Hydro Pump, which would you want to use yourselves? Depends on the situation. Oh my, I see you're always considering various possibilities, Tiki. I may have made it sound like there was a correct answer here, but there's not! You're free to use any moves you wish. Factors like moves of PP or a number of, tar or a number of targets may make some moves more situated to certain use uh, situations. However, trading accuracy for power, or vice versa, is purely a matter of preference. Surf vs. Hydro Pump. The Surf vs. Hydro Pump debate has been ongoing for quite some time. Uh, there's not really a debate. Surf is usually better unless you're in a... In competitive, you want to avoid moves that don't have 100 accuracy, because that, because, or that have less than 100 accuracy, unless you're using, like... Fire Blast. But like Thunder, if you're not uh, using a rain setup, you don't want to use Thunder or Hurricane in competitive. <laughs> Personally, I'm more invested in debating the Rock like moves Rock Slide and Stone Edge. Again, again, Stone Edge is general. So Stone, in that case, Stone Edge is generally preferred because it has the higher critical hit ratio, so it's so it has basically an invisible boost to its accuracy. Let me tell you, I could really get worked up talking about the because it, because the crit the accuracy check rolls before the crit check. Um. So basically, if it if it, it, it hits, it's going to. Um, it's not a thing of if if it if it crits, it is going to hit. <laughs> uh, but people tend people usually use Stone Edge over Rock Slide, unless you're not unless you're like me in Gen Eight and could not uh, with uh, my Colossal and couldn't find a Stone Edge TM. <laughs> also, Stone Edge has er uh, less. Power points than Rot Slide, so like for end game, it's better to just use the ones that have more power points. In my experience, I tell you, I could really get talking talking about these moves, but oh my, there's the bell. What a shame! Next class will be our last time together, so show up 100% ready to go. Okay, yeah, we're we probably have to complete another gym or two before we can actually do uh, the last class. That's actually kind of funny. Um, we'll quickly run through the rest of these. Then I will take a break, and then when we come back, we will do more Forspoken. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did today, 
of yesterday's not part of history. Today we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. I trust you all remember before or lesson before the midterm concerning the great crater Paldea and its interior, Area Zero. This mysterious crater captured the imaginations of many, including the former Paldean Emperor. 200 years ago, a group of explorers claimed to have finally reached its depths. The name of the team that achieved this great feat was the Area Zero Expedition. The team is said to have been made up of Paldea's best and brightest. Skilled battlers, brilliant researchers, talented individuals of all kinds. Among the list uh, that of team members was the name of a man who was an author and a brilliant natural historian. He, uh, after he re returned from the expedition to Area Zero, he used his literary talent to record events of the expedition and, and publish them. Why wouldn't he do that while uh, while everything was going on? Also, her belt's a Lunala, I just realized! Ah, oh, perfect timing to make you eye contact, TNT. Let's see if you were paying attention. What was the name of the first team that made it to the deepest reaches of the Great... Uh... The, the Era Zero Survey Corps. Uh... Era Zero. Correct, to pick up on and remember a term I simply slipped into the flow of the lecture. You really are quite the clever one. The correct name for this team was the Area Zero Expedition. So her belt's a Lunala. Her necklace looks like an Articuno, but also like, but it also has like Ho-Oh sort of motif going on with the wings and the tail. But like the top, but like the head of it is very clearly like an Articuno, the head of a Cantonian Articuno. Or well, a, a non-Galarian Articuno. The record of their activities can be writ uh, written by the expedition member Keith can be found in bookstores and like even today. This record is known as the Violet Book. By the time the entire region at the time the entire region of Paldea was absolutely buzzing about areas in Rome. The Violet Book was so cop popular that practically everyone had a copy. However, the book itself was full of fantastical descriptions and imagine and illustrations of things that could never ever be thought of as real. The masses began to call Heath a liar. Even the tr truth of the expedition making it to the bottom of the crater was called into question. The Violet Book was condemned to the shelves of used bookstores as just another book of wild paranormal stories. There's a copy on one of the bookshelves on the grand floor of the entrance hall. Feel free to have a, have a read if you're interested. Oh, is it that time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. That ends today's lessons. We'll unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. There's a copy of it in the hallway, is there? The entrance hallway, is there? I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing. You know, I would expect it to be. No, I have a Yuva Academy, not Yuva. Types of moves. One. I would expect it to just be a big, obvious purple book. Oh, you know what? I don't know why it never crossed my mind that we could probably go up these stairs. <laughs> Let's see, is the Violet Book on, like, some weird pedestal in the middle? What the heck? Um... Oh, 
Hall of Fame badge is a record. Turo. Culture. I'm gonna be real annoyed if the violet book is just a random green book. <laughs> uh, that was a culture, right? Yes. It's an October issue. September issue. Hey, I said, why well, Norbat and Mimic you? Mimic you wins against both of those guys. Crystals of Paltea. an issue of a culture. Art the scenic route. Monthly. Well, this sucks. We were because we were lied to. Um, I was told there was a copy of the violet. Oh, here it is, right here. Go away. What? What? It's a violet book from a serious purple tone. Do you want to read it? Yes. Great Crater of Paldea. Uh, let me actually read this. Photograph from the survey team's point of ingress to the crater, which is visible in the background. Luck favored us with fine weather, making for a smooth outset, but clouds obscured the crater's distant depths where the treasure of legend is said to lie. Now, onward and downward. The great crater of Paldea was a mysterious area zero, a place home to such landscapes, such as such plant life and such Pokemon as we had never seen. It is inhospitable to human life, and such I suspect something altogether unknown to humankind sleeps in its depths. Photograph of the spot where the team rested on day two of the expedition. Note the strange symbols inscribed in the ground here. Were they left by public scores in the time of the Paldean Empire, or could they be older still? Regardless, they seem as if they hold, must hold some meaning. Ledges form a spiral down the inner walls of Area Zero, offering a path of descent. Vegetation and sources of water are here as well. Legends tell that precious stones are wondrous fruits of long slept in Area Zero's depths, and protected by some manner of guardian. Sketches by a survey team member. Surprisingly, the Pokemon species we observed in the upper strata of Area Zero seemed a little different from those seen outside the crater. 
Now and then we heard unfamiliar cries from the lower strata. Monsters of Area Zero. As we descended further into Area Zero, we began to uh, catch glimpses of mysterious Pokémon. Though we wonder if these compact, cruel beasts were indeed Pokémon at all. One of our team suffered a brutal blow from such a beast and was mortally wounded, forcing us to retreat for a time. Uh, a member of the survey team captured this photograph by chance and noticed a passing resemblance to the Pokémon known as Dawnfang. Had different such as its texture and the way it moves suggest it is biologically separate, to say nothing of its treads of iron. Urban Mystica. Area Zero was home to wondrous herbs that instantly impart vigor when eaten. We dubbed them Urban Mystica and attempted to grow some in areas around Paldea. However, before we could harvest, the herbs were eaten by Pokémon, which in turn grew large and strong. We call these Titan Pokémon. A Gibble and an Eevee. Mysterious Plates. During our descent into Area Zero, we came across a buried metal inscribed with a strange symbol. A um, buried metal plate with inscribed with a strange symbol. We attempted to shave off a piece of the plate, but failed to leave even a scratch. Even determining the nature of the metal seems beyond, seems beyond modern science. We know not why the inscription was made, and let alone how. So are those the Arceus plates? Probably the Arceus plates. An imagined Pokémon. What the heck? That looks like... Terrakion mixed with Cobalion mixed with the Ver uh, Verizian. An imagined Pokemon, a fantastical drawing, uh, a drawing of a fantastical Pokemon as envisioned by our sketch artist. The compactness and cruelty of the strange Pokemon that dwell in Area Zero, whose lower reaches tickled the artist's imagination, prompting the sketch of what other species that might inhabit these depths might look like. Wait, did I not read the legendary treasure? Countless days into our descent, we reached the very depths of the Great Crater. There we found a cave with formations of gemstones, shining blindingly bright as far as we could see. Perhaps the strange light itself is the guardian said to watch it of her treasure deep within the crater. I think I... Yeah, I think I looked at... Uh, I think I skipped uh, that accidentally. <laughs> A phantom memory. During our exploration of Ezra Zero, in depth, I, Heath, strayed from the team and was later found unconscious. When awoken, I could only recall speaking with someone in an unfamiliar place, as if in a dream. I was found holding a page shown the page shown here. The handwriting is my own, but I have no memory of writing this. Take a sponsor. Uh, the author Heath pictured with the director of Yuva Academy. Uh, the Academy's generous funding made the Area Zero expedition possible, and the data gathered has shared has been shared with the Academy in hopes that will aid the institution's research work and foster future generations of scientists and scholars. I don't know which one is Heath. I assume Heath is on the left. The author. Oh, yep, Heath. It. That was Heath. Okay. Heath, author of the Violet Book, shown here with his partner Cyclonzar, a natural historian as well as a writer. He was chosen for the Area Zero expedition and penned this account upon returning from the great crater of Paldea. Cyclonzar aided the expedition as well by burying the team's luggage and equipment. Uh, 
something Pokemon. Well, separated from the research team Risk Disc Pokemon? Well, separated from the t research team in the crater's depths, I found a strange entity. Whether it was a Pokemon or even alive at all, I know not. It bore a shell with layers of overlapping hexagons and gleaming brighter still than gemstones. Failed as a whole, it resembled a mysterious, brilliant disc. Team Rocket Pumpkin, thank you for the follow. So I guess that's supposed to be a disc Pokemon, you know. Uh, let's quickly run through these. Got distracted with the Violet Book. I thought we'd be able to finish the school stuff, but unfortunately it seems like it is actually linked to completing, uh, gyms. It's probably the third legend. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the third legendary that is being speculated. My dear friend, how are you all today? I hope you're doing marvelously well. It's time for another of Salvatore's language lessons. If we pray, are you ready? We. Oui. I would expect no less from my excellent friends. Even your replies to my questions are excellent. Until we... Today, we will once again be focusing on listening. Vasi, go for it, my assistant. Pika pi e Pikachu! Pikachu! As you may remember from our last class, us the same Pokemon's cries may sound different depending on what it wants to say. Until we, that is, today, or today, that is, we will be learning more about the language used by Pokemon. Jet in free if you will be so kind, Pikachu. Pika! Hmm, that sounds a little bit, doesn't it? It almost seems a little lower pitch, too. What do you suppose Pikachu. almost do you suppose Pikachu was trying to convey just now? Okay, so if it's happiness, surprise, or sadness, or sadness, that just means. That just means that I'm assuming these are just all the same uh, across three lessons. So yeah, the angry wouldn't have even been an option. But it sounds like he's trying to get us to do sadness. Ding ding ding! ding. That's correct, Tiki. Fantastic. When Pikachu says, "Pika," it's expressing sadness. It kind of makes you want to cry, doesn't it? That's right. I had my little. For Pikachu cry as if it was crying. Haha, <laughs> funny joke, right? Don't you think it did a great job? Give Pikachu a round of applause, everyone. And now, apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. If you hear one of your Pokemon making sad noises like this one, you should treat them with even more kindness than usual. Well, you probably already knew that, though. A piece of cake for all of you, for you all, I'm sure. Of course, this goes for your classmates and others as well. Friends should support each other in times of sadness. I truly hope that you all can have smiles on your faces all the time, my friends. Our prochain call, or next lesson, that is, will be our final lesson to get there. I hope you're ready for the climactic finale. Adios, matane! Alright, battle studies.
Another day, another round of battle study. All soup. Let's get right to it. I hope we all gave. I hope we gave auto battles a shot like we talked about last class. Making good use of auto battles will let you train up a bunch of different Pokemon. It's also an efficient way to gather the Pokemon materials you need to make teams of TM machines. Speaking of which, have you all been using the TM machines? I sure hope so, because it's pop quiz time! Great teams, you need Pokemon materials and one other thing. Anyone remember what that is? LP. League points. Looks like you're already a TM machine pro, new kid. The correct answer is League Points, or LP for short. You can give LP and Pokemon materials to a TM machine to create TMs, but that's not all. You can also exchange Pokemon materials at a TM machine to get LP. I recently heard about some shady individuals getting LP illegally using a technique called hacking, or something like that. I don't want any of you getting involved in bad stuff like that, got it? Anyway, you can also add teams that you want to make to your watch list. This will let you keep an eye on the materials you need to gather. In conclusion, in order to make teams, you need Pokemon materials. If you want to get a hold of lots of materials, you'll have to battle all kinds of Pokemon. Aw oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we're never going to have the time. Class is over for now. Take care, you little rascals. So we were going to, we were just going to go out beating up everything, basically. Uh. Uh. I guess we'll just do. Yeah, we'll just do art and home ec and once we finish. Uh this I will will take a break so I can or I'll take that break so I can switch over to so I can eat and finish my laundry and then get set up for force bogum. Hello class, it is I, Hustle, yet again. First allow me to apologize for losing my composure during our last class. I was so touched by Brassius' story that I simply couldn't contain my emotions. I'm sorry for making such a scene. I certainly got a very stern talking to from Miss Time after that class, yes. Anyway, let us shift gears and dive into the material for today's class. Have, now, have any of you heard of the Ten Sites of Paldea? Heard to, I've been to like at least eight of them. As the name would imply, there are ten sites in Paldea that are considered particularly beautiful. Among them, I would say the Grand Olive Orchard is likely the most accessible. You can see field after field of olive trees from the hill on Cortonado, on the way to Cortonado. Two waterfalls are also counted among these ten sites, Fury Falls and Casaroya Falls. Then there's also the peak of Glasnadeo Mountain, known as Paldea's highest peak. There's another cliff on Glasnadeo Mountain that's named after its rather unique shape. Oh, Glasnado's uh, Reach. So, let me ask you, my students. What is the name of the three pong clip on Glossadeo Mountain? No need to grasp at straws. Glossadeo's Reach. A very good guess. I think something. Uh. Reaching out would stretch farther, though. Oh, is it Grasp? Oh, it, it's Grasp. Okay. The three pong. Uh. Cliff on Glossadeo's. Mountain is, in fact, known as Glossadeo's Grasp. Though the shape is far too stubby to be that of a human hand, I imagine someone thought it looked like a Pokemon hand grabbing something. There's also the mountains in Area 3 of East Province, where you can get a good look at Levincia. It's a particularly gorgeous, uh, it's particularly gorgeous at night. In fact, the view is so brilliant, it's known as the Million Volt Skyline. And here it's quite a hot spot for dates, and deservedly so for having such a romantic view. I imagine it's what do the kids say these days? A uh, very, um, fleek selfie spot? No one says that. Of course, 
as you may feel that not all ten sites live up to the grandiose names, how often do we visit some tourist spot only to be disappointed? Not to say that you shouldn't visit them, only that you shouldn't keep you should keep your hopes in check. The important thing is to go see uh, to go yourself and see them with your own two eyes. We've been to uh, all, everyone that they mentioned, I just didn't remember what- I just thought it was reach instead of grasp. Uh, and sometimes a disappointing experience can be worthwhile in its own way. Take a chance. Well, that's it for today, class. Thank you for your attention. Mac. Put your phones away and decide to begin class. While performing field work with one of your Pokemon walking alongside you, have you ever noticed changes in its coloration? I don't mean that it suddenly becomes a shiny Pokemon or any nonsense like that. I'm speaking of it becoming filthy. Pokemon battle. They get uh, hurt by moves used against them. They get battered by wind and rain. They get covered in sand and mud. They get in a word. Filthy. Hey, some of them like that. Like, water types, they love the rain. Ground types, they love the sand and the mud. Same with rock types. I've seen many a trainer walking about without but with their adorable little Pokemon without addressing the issue. It is de this issue. It is deplorable. Let me ask this question of someone uh, who I'm sure would not tolerate such shameful conduct. Ah yes, Miss Tiki. What do you do if your Pokemon is dirty? Bring it up. Perfectly correct. I knew I could counter you to provide me with such an answer. When your Pokemon are dirty, clean them. This is, of course, simply common sense. While you are having a picnic, you can approach the Pokemon on your team and perform a variety of actions. One such action is putting them through what I like to call the Pokemon Wash. In other words, you are able to clean them up. You start by getting your sponge lathered up with soapy bubbles as you gently and carefully scrub your Pokemon. Once your Pokemon is nice and covered in soap bubbles, the bubbles will encapsulate the filth, and then you simply wash it away with a spray of water. This will get your Pokemon clean and shining bright as a terror jewel. Just don't do it to fire types. Or rot types. Or ground types that don't have water absorbed. It is quite... It is certainly quite a bit of work, but this will also restore HP and cure status conditions. And with some Pokemon may have parts of their bodies that they don't want scrubbed, or that would rather... Or that they would rather not get wet. Be sure to keep this in mind when cleaning your Pokémon. Now the most important point that I must mention is that some Pokémon LIKE to be dirty. Though I will contradict myself by saying this, please do remember that cleaning your Pokémon is not always the kind thing to do. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all farewell. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, like ground types. <laughs> Probably poison types as well, because that would be really weird to clean a poison type and have it, you know, enjoy that. So are these available now? No, they're not. Okay. So yeah, I think I do have to... Uh, I think we do have to... do... If not one more gym, then we have to finish the gym to complete... to do the final, um school lessons. I imagine we have to finish I imagine once we complete seven gyms we can do all the the school lessons but once we can and once we complete all eight gyms we can take the final. Um so I mean a little disappointing that we weren't able to just go all the way through them but I kind of get why they did that. They wanted to you know, kind of sparse things out and make you, um... Make it so you don't just go through everything all at the same time, or, or all at 
Make it so you don't just power through the school all at one or all in one go. Uh, so like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and well, we'll heal our team up just to make sure. We're good to go for the next for next time. Uh, next time may actually be next Wednesday because that Tuesday's Valentine's Day, and I may have plans that day. I'm not certain. Uh, there's a uh, I'm not I'm not, I'm not 100 certain. Uh, we will have to see. Uh, I, I, I will tweet about I will tweet whether about it uh, or I'll, I'll be sure to keep people in the know via Twitter uh, if I am if I am able to because um, uh, it wasn't letting me because it wasn't letting me reply to tweets for some reason uh, but I may just have to get a new, but I may just have to like reinstall the app or something like that. Um, so for now, we're gonna call, we're gonna call things here for now, and when we come back next time, we'll go do the, le we'll do the last two gyms, we'll, we will finish the school lessons. I want to see what happens with, especially with the, um... The history professor lady, because we, because like we've already seen these doors, uh, around. Like we we found one like within the first like maybe two hours of the game that was like right here. And we were like, oh, what is this weird door thing? Oh, it's it's got to be related to the stake things. I don't know, but I don't know how. Uh, now we know a lot better. We found all four of them, we just have to find the stakes themselves, but I'm curious as to how things will progress with um I keep forgetting, the, the history professor, I keep forgetting her name uh so, we'll, so what I think we'll do, we'll probably do the last two gems then uh, then we'll come finish up what's left of the school Maybe do a little bit of grinding before taking on the Elite Four and Champion, um... Or, and Championship Battle, uh... I'm actually not sure how the Championship is gonna go this time around. We might just be fighting Namona for the Championship. Uh, because she's, like, considered to be, like, a Champion-ranked trainer, um... You know what? I don't think I've ever been up here. If I mark this... I don't... I'll mark that there. Uh, we'll go check that out next time, too. Because I don't think I've ever been... Simply because I don't think I've ever been up, up here, so this might be just where, like, some of the stuff for... some of the blue stakes... Or even, or maybe even some of the stakes, some of the green stakes, uh... Oh yeah, because that's the South Province every, Area 3, so that's still the South Province over here. Um... So the last, like, couple of stakes, or like the last stake that we're missing might just be up here on this rock formation here. And we just didn't find it. Area 6, Area 2, Area 5 is right here. Again, I wish there was a little bit more definition to where the South Province ends and the East Pro and uh, like, I'm, I'm assuming that basically past Artisan is the East Pro is considered East Province. But, like, for the West Province, like, this is, like, right here is consider like, out here is considered, like, South Province. But then it turns west just kind of randomly up here. <laughs> uh, 
So, I, you know, I, I wish there was a little bit more definition to the borders there. Just for the sake of making it easier for, like, uh, finding... The, uh, finding the, um... But just, for, just for making it, things a little more uniform for finding the stakes. So if you're... Th those stakes. So, like, if, if we're looking for a pink stake down here, for example... Uh, and there's, and if there was just a wall right here, like a gate, or to even just like a small fence that we can easily hop over that was just marked on, that was just marked, and it was like, oh, right here, and then suddenly it turned, everything turns East Province. You know, that would, that would just, that would just be, like, that would, that would be just a nice touch for the player. Or that would just be a, a nice touch, in my opinion, for the player. Just just to kind of, to kind of help give things a little bit more uniformity, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Uh, I guess I guess the best way, or I guess a better way of describing it is just to make the boundaries a little more between provinces a little more clear. Like I don't like I don't really care too much about area one through five or one through six or however many areas it is. Uh, what I care about is where does east turn to, to south, or south turn to west, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, next time we will finish up, uh, it, it, like I said, it may, be when, it may be Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, it depends on, it depends on, uh, some stuff. Uh, coming up. Uh, next time, but next time we play, we will definitely knock out these last two gym leaders. We will definitely finish up the school stuff, and we'll probably check out this clip up here at the very least. And we'll probably look. I'm probably gonna pull up a map for the rest of the for the stakes, so uh, so I can find so we can find those without nearly as much. Um, Annoyance, if that makes sense. Uh, because, like, we know where most, we know where, we know where all four of the doors are. It's just a matter of finding the same. Well, we don't know exactly where the one that's like, oh, that's like in this general area is. Uh, but it's in this general kind of area. There's like an underpass here, and then it's like maybe like right here. Like I know, I know for a fact you can see the lighthouse here from the door because I very distinctly remember that, and I just know that it's somewhere along this cliff side right here. Uh, the other ones I know that they're like like along this well, actually not even along the river. They're like ones just directly east of this lighthouse. It's like right here-ish, I think. Uh, one is up here by the bamboo place. Right here. And then the last one is right here, basically. Uh, but yeah, we'll continue. Um, we'll continue next time. We'll finish out the gyms, finish out the school, maybe try to find the rest of the uh, the rest of those stakes. Maybe expand my Pokédex a little bit more. Uh, depending on what we find around and how many. Pokeballs we have. Uh, I kind of want to get everyone to uh, at least level 65 before we fight battle the Elite Four. So that might be a, like that may uh, that may seem difficult to do, but we have we have plenty of rare candies. In fact, I could do that right now if I wanted to. We have plenty of rare candies. We have plenty of ESP candies. We're we're in a pretty good situation for our current um, setup, or with our current uh, setup and our current team. I do wish I could add 
uh, either Golden Go or... Wait, I, I, I would like to have Golden Go on the team, but the problem is I just don't see any really, like, there's really not a good spot. There's really nothing I can replace for Golden Go without reworking basically my entire team, because if I were to put add Golden Go, that would basically both re replace both Pandora and Malice. And then I'd be down a fire type, which I wouldn't be able to do, which, uh, I would be able to do, if I was in Violet, I would be able to just use uh, Armor Rouge, or however it's pronounced, for my fire type, but I'm in Violet, so I literally can't get it without trades. <laughs> Uh, or by playing through Scarlet and Violet, like once they add Pokemon Home support, by playing through Scarlet, getting one, and then transferring it up, or transferring it to Pokemon Home, and then transferring it over. Um... But, yeah, that's going to do it for tonight. I, well, for Pokemon. Uh, I will see you all in... I'll try to say 8.30 Central Time, which is uh, a little over 45 minutes from now. Uh, where we will be continuing with Forspoken. For now, thanks for coming out, and I will see you all in a little while. Later.